Verse number eight, the Bible reads, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The Bible says good and upright is the Lord. And because he is good, because the Lord is upright, because the Lord is good, therefore he's going to teach sinners in the way. What's he going to teach sinners? He's going to teach them the right way. He's going to teach them what? That they're wrong. That they're sinners. Ignoring sin is not very loving. Pretending like it didn't happen is not very loving. You know, just, just letting people continue in their sin is not loving. See, God doesn't ignore our sins. Don't replace forgiveness with ignorance or ignoring of our sins. Because the two are not the same at all. God's not overlooking your sins. God knows exactly what the sins are. Jesus Christ had to pay for those sins. And it's a heavy price to pay. And thank God they were, pray, they were paid for, and he's giving us that great gift. But, you know, thank God that he is good and upright enough to teach sinners in the way. James 5 says this. You don't have to turn there. James 5, verse number 19 says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Now, I do not believe that that verse is talking about getting somebody saved, like their soul being saved. He says, brethren, so he's already speaking to his brethren. I believe brothers and sisters in Christ. He's talking to people who are already saved. If any of you do err from the truth, if you're in error from the truth, if you're doing something wrong, and one convert him. So the conversion, again, I don't think the conversion is converting like a soul onto Jesus Christ. It's a brother who needs to be converted in an area that he's wrong on. An area where he's in sin on, and you're, you show him and say, hey, no, look, you're wrong about this, and you actually convert him and win him over to the truth. Let him know that he which converteth, and look, at this isn't just a difference of doctrine, because he says that converteth the sinner from the error of his way. This can be someone who, for example, doesn't believe it's wrong or sinful to get married after divorce and your spouse is, you know, this is, this is a big deal, especially these days. And that would be sinful to go and do, but if you could convert someone and say, look, this is what the Bible says. Hey, look, don't do it. Check out what this says and convert them from the error of his way, you know what? You can save a soul from death. And why does he save a soul from death? Because sometimes when you sin against the Lord, God can just take your life. He's done it before, and he'll do it again. And I'm not saying in that particular situation I brought up that God will just kill you, okay? But, but he may. I don't know. You know, I mean, the thing is, there are definitely instances we saw with Ananias and Sapphira, Right? They lied under the Holy Ghost. We, some people might look at that and be like, wow, that's, God killed them for that? They gave money to the church and God killed them. Well, but there's more to it than that, though, right? But they did. I mean, if you, think, if you just go like, whoa, I mean, they gave money. They, what do you mean? They didn't give it all? No, they lied about it. They, they sold a piece of property and they said, we're giving all the proceeds of this property. We're giving all that money here to the church. And they, you know, and they brought in the money and they didn't. And they're making this big deal about it, and they, you know what? They kept back some of the money. They were covetous of it and, and greedy of it, and, but they wanted the, the recognition for what they'd done, and they kept some for themselves. And they dropped dead. 